Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here, and I am the Audiophiliac. This is the Klipsch RP600M bookshelf speaker. It is $550 a pair. I'm just starting on a review of it. But this episode of the Audiophiliac Daily Show isn't so much about this speaker. It's about horn speakers. And I'm wondering why horns are not a bigger part of the audiophile universe, right? I mean, most audiophiles have box speakers, direct radiating speakers, not horn speakers, or they have um, panel speakers like electrostatic speakers or magnapans or something, right? That's the bulk of what most audiophiles uh, listen to and enjoy. But a couple of weeks ago, I spent time at the CNET office with this guy's little brother, the R51M, which is $250 a pair. And um, I was kind of blown away by this thing. Uh, it just had life, it had energy, it was exciting, it was fun. You know, um, if, the, if there's a failing for audiophile speakers is that they're too analytical, they're too dry, they don't have any get up and go, right? So I'm comparing this R51M $250 speaker to a $300 a pair ELAC debut B6.2, current B6. And it's a much bigger speaker. It's actually about this size. And um, it had more bass than the little Klipsch. It had better, sweeter mid-range. It did certain things better. Image a little more open. But it didn't have the life of the Klipsch. And then I added a subwoofer. I, have, I had a Pioneer sub. I put in the sub. And now that the sub, the bass was brought up by having the sub with the clips, it was a $350 sub. So the whole thing was 600 bucks. It was like, whoa, that thing had just, it had balls now because it had a subwoofer, but it had still had all the life and energy of the little clipses. So anyway, I'm, I'm just, I'm processing, I'm thinking about all of this. And I, I called the guys over at the Harmon store in New York City and I went to hear some big JBL. So I started off with the 4429, which is actually not big, it's not little, uh, but it's a bookshelf speaker. It's kind of like a, like a heresy that it's a, it's a low floor standing speaker on a very low stand, maybe like a six, six, eight inch stand. It's sort of tilted up. And I was knocked out. Those are five grand, they have a big they have 12 inch woofer, mid-range horn, mid-range tweeter. And uh, I was like, whoa, that was, a thrill. Then I thought some more. I said, you know, I should get one of the bigger actual tower uh, JBL horns. So I went back and I heard the S3900 speakers. That first one was called um, 4429, the, the JBL. Then I went back to hear the floor sanding one. And now that one, that's 10 grand. Um, and that one was, that was it, man. Now 10 grand was crazy amount of money, but in the audiophile world, it's not a crazy amount of money. I'd say compared to, you know, a Wilson or a Magico or something, that's like the bottom of the line, right? So I'm listening to these, um, these JBLs and I'm playing uh, electric bass, you know, um, uh, Wingless Angels, this Keith Richards, uh, he was involved in this, in this reggae group. It's kind of like folk reggae, but there's some electric bass and just the texture of the bass on this Wingless Angels record was just like, whoa, that does not come out of a Wilson speaker or a Magico speaker or a YG acoustic speaker. No, man, this had, it had texture, it had growl. I mean, it sounded like an electric bass. It didn't, didn't just make deep bass. It had that kind of palpable feeling you get from electric bass. And of course it had dynamics. Oh, and I'm listening to another recording, uh, you know, drums and listen to the snares and the crack of the snare again, you know, no $10,000 box speaker can do that. And oh, the other thing was amazing. I played a Chesky, a live Chesky recording with Camille Thurman and the applause on the big JBLs was just so much more lifelike. Applause is really hard to get right. You rarely hear recordings of applause that sound good or much less speakers that can reproduce the sound of applause. This big JBL, the S3900, it did. It was, whoa. And you know, you hear it and you go, yeah, that's special. That's really something. And being a big 
you know, horn speaker, it could play loud, effortlessly. But you know what? So could the $249 uh, Klipsch, the R51M. Not as loud as the giant uh, JBL, but that, that's what horns do. They play loud uh, with lower distortion than a, than a direct radiating box speaker. You know, just a box speaker with the tweeters and the mid-ranges all on the front. Those speakers, as you play them louder, their, their distortion goes up. That's the way it works. But with horn speakers, because the horn is so much more efficient, and other reasons that, that I won't go to here, into here, um, as you raise the level, the distortion isn't going up in the way it does on a direct radiating speaker. So you wind up playing them louder because it just feels good. It's more like live music. I mean, you don't have to. And I did spend some time with all of these horns playing them at quieter levels, and they were still really good. But there's just something about them that, I guess, encouraged me to like, yeah, yeah, I want to hear it a little louder. I want to hear it a little louder. And it was just, it was exciting. I mean, that's the thing. I keep coming around. And I felt like a, like an audiophile hedonist. You know, I was just like, it was a pleasure machine. I just was getting off on hearing those horns. So I'm going to be talking more about all of these speakers, including this one here, which I will be doing on my blog for CNET. Um, and the R51M is a, is a formal CNET review that will appear soon or may have already appeared by the time I put this video up. And I will have more to say about the 4429 and the s uh, 3,900 JBL horns. But this exciting chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show is really about my excitement about horn speakers. And I am starting a one-man campaign to raise awareness of horn speakers. That There's box speakers, which most people have, and then there's panel speakers, which some people have, but we need more horns. Of course, there's a lot of talk and buzz, of course, about really expensive horns like avant-garde horns, you know, which are many multiples more expensive than the, than the products I'm talking about today. So um, that's it. Horns. Think about horns. That's your assignment class. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and it does come up daily, as in right now, seven days a week daily. So come back often. Please subscribe and get that little notification. When you subscribe, you have this thing with a little bell. And if you click on that, you'll be notified every time there's a new video posted. And if you really dig these things, please check. And I will explain someday why I don't put a link or something. But for now, please check out my Patreon page, which is www.patreon, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. That's it for today. See you next time.